And we're back with some more oxygen not included on our 141 dupe challenge. It's uh, yeah, it's getting slow. It's getting really slow. I don't know if you can see them there, but there's a bunch of little duplicates running along. We're building a ladder all the way along here. We want to get our rocket chimney started this uh, episode. In fact, I think we're hopefully to get it started and finished. We've got enough labor. At the same time, we're also melting this area over here. A few handily installed temperature shift plates should help speed that along. And at the same time, we have one more project going on over here, and that is the shovels. Ah, that's that's finally melted. It took a while, but all of the gunk, over, all the water over here finally melted, and we've got steam. Not very hot steam, mind you, but who cares? Now that that's all steam, it'll make sure that nothing in here overheats. The auto sweeper won't heat, overheat, the mining drills, all of that should be golden. Uh, we'll just let that keep going anyway. Ooh, and we should probably add some shovels, shouldn't we? Which means we're going to need another robo miner. Now... Robo miner should go right about there. Uh, it's hard to see on the screen, but that robo miner, it can reach all the way across here and mine out that chunk, which is what we want. Now you might be worried that occasionally voles would vomit two piles of regolith up here, and the regolith would entomb this robo miner, causing this whole thing to shut down. But we have a drill over there that can diagonally mine down there and take out those two tiles. So even if that does get caught, it should get saved by that. Uh, at the same time, this drill up here, make sure that any regolith vomited up through the door should also get drilled out. Just, yeah, wanted to make sure there was no problems with any of those uh, sneaky shovels. Can't have them coming up the works. Uh, one thing we also want to do is, this is the overflow. So when we have enough eggs in here, we'll have all the overflow eggs come along this conveyor rail and head down to our starvation ranch down here. Now, people were worried about regolith ending up in here and causing coming up the works. It's a starvation ranch. There is no regolith going in here. All the critters that come in here will come in as eggs. They will never taste food in their entire lives, and they will just be bred until they die. There's a whole tutorial done up on this side to use it. So that means you don't have to worry about regolith coming up the works there. However, I don't want to have to count up how many eggs go in here. I think it was 76 or... I'll look it up in a minute. Uh, I needed X amount of eggs to keep them all going. So let's put in a little counting utility. So I'm thinking... Yeah, one of these suckers will do. In fact, we'll use three of these. Oh, come on. Why does that gas vent have to be so inconveniently placed? You know what? You can go. All right, so we're going to put four, three signal counters here. Uh, we only need two, realistically, but I'm going to stick in a, an extra one just to be sure. We can use lead for the wires here. This wire is connected up to that one. Then the output of this is connected up to the input of this one, output of this, input of this one. And then we're going to set all three of them up the same way. We're going to put them on advanced mode and set them to nine. There we go, and we'll copy and paste those across. We set this detector here, it's a conveyor rail element sensor. We set that to de detect shovel legs. If a shovel leg is detected going across here, it sends out a green signal, which causes this to increment by one. Once this hits nine, it sends out a pulse to this one, telling it to increment by one, and this resets itself to zero. So we just have a crude counter. When I say crude, I mean very crude. As uh, shovel legs come down here, if there's two shovel legs coming at the same time, they'll just act like one packet and only be counted as one. So if you sent down one or a bunch of seven all in a row, all packed up tight to get together, there'll be no uh, counting extra. But ugh, finding a consistent way to spread out the eggs proved complicated, and I couldn't come up with a simplistic enough method that I was happy with. So I just decided to leave it as it is. It's highly unlikely we're going to end up with two shovel legs dropping at identical times. So, yeah, we'll just have to learn to live with that. And it gives us a rough idea of how many eggs are going in here, so we know when to stop the flood of eggs that are going to end up in that section. Now it's time to transfer some voles across. Mmm, excellent. We've already got a few moved in. All we're doing is... Oh, here comes an egg as well. That egg should drop down at some point. Come on, come on, there we go. Auto sweeper should pick it up and dump it into the conveyor loader. Wait, it was just a case of uh, some confusion between... Uh, who wanted this also wanted the egg as well so that one picked it up now i'm gonna have these eggs all dumped back in here this entire first batch they're all just going to be bred in here every egg though beyond this that's going to get shipped out what is it looking like in here we've got four critters i think we'll have a, a max population of 12 in here so if the population in here is below 12 that includes critters and everything else Oh, we need to install that drill soon. But if the population is below 12, we will keep adding on, or the eggs will all get dumped back here in the corner. After 20 cycles, they'll pop. Having about 12 of these should be more than enough. Uh, what are you doing? Hey, you should be dumping it into that thing. That thing's closer by. There we go. Now we're getting a thousand kilos in there per, well, per operation. I think, I think that's a setup. Now, one last thing is just to make sure all of these get wrangled up. There's still a few, ah. How did you get loose? Someone got called to lunch while they're in the middle of that. And we'll wrangle all of those back up. And you need to not put vomit everywhere. Stop it. 
Yeah, we'll wrangle all of those up. We'll get them moved into our new uh, our new breeding facility, and hopefully we'll have eggs strolling into our uh, starvation ranch in no time. Just as we finish up all of this, we've got all of our voles moved in here. Though uh, we still haven't got the robo miner replaced since we deleted the critter drop off. We do have one more thing to do, and that is to add another duplicate. Duplicate ninety eight. Yeah, I think we'll be grabbing science, cuisine, and strength. Unconstructive, but they'll make a, an excellent gopher. Say hello to Tri Phoenix. They will be joining us just now. That's a new friend for everyone on the map. A lot of duplicates. Jeez, 98. So close to 100. But once that's finished, that will be that whole system set up, and we won't have to worry about it until, well, until we've got enough eggs out of it for this section. Once this has enough eggs, we're probably going to want to build another one of these so we can fill up another, well, another one of these little micro bases so we can also fill up its ranch. And once we get around to that, we can probably start deconstructing these old ranches. These are just taking up frames and it it's just an awful lot of manual labor that our dupes need to do to keep these fed and stocked. So hopefully once we delete those, it'll help speed things up a little bit. At the same time, down this uh, whole right hand side, there's a big long string of insulated walls. We're getting ready to wall this whole side in and we've just about finished melting all of this. Nice. Yeah, pumping hot water around the place has eventually gotten the temperature to a nice melty point. Almost done. This should just take another minute. At this point, I should probably just chop it up. But you know how it is. Once you get into a job and you're almost done, it just... Taking shortcuts near the end feels uh, almost like cheating, even if it is slightly more efficient. I swear we have so many little construction projects queued up everywhere. We're trying to clean up the ladder system here. We're also trying to extend this ladder up here. The, the, the rocket chimney has to go all the way to the top of the map. Well, it doesn't have to. We could probably stop a little bit lower down. But, you know, there's no point doing half measures. If you're going to do something, you might as well go the whole hog. Uh, we won't really have time to clean out the vent, as in vacuum it out. So we're probably just going to let most of the gases escape into the vacuum of space, at least to start. Uh, how's everyone doing then there? Uh, that's almost done. We can, we're almost a bit ready to drop this. Actually, I think we are ready to drop this. How's the water looking? Yeah, all the pipes are drained. There's just a couple more pipes to be popped. And then we can drill a hole through here. Let's just have a quick look down and make sure we haven't missed anything. Uh, that should plummet all the way down here. Nothing to block it. Everyone's finishing up a few bits and bobs here and there. And eventually hit our bottom water tank where it can get pumped over into our other water tank on the left of us. It's fine. Now, let's just make sure we melt the last of this ice here, and we should be good to start our rocket chimney. We're just about done down here. We're we're breaking this up a bit because I don't want any of that water in the bottom of the chimney. Also, we're we're trying to continue on the chimney down here. We, we've got to basically put an entire insulated row all the way down the left-hand side of the map, and a ladder on the inside of it, and then figure out how we're going to get an entrance into it and a few other minor logistical problems. But right now, the best part of this is, where is it? Ah, yes, you'll see there's some seeds falling down there and a whole bunch of water. So, yeah, let's see where that's all going. That is just a beautiful, glorious mess as we drain that tank out. Nope, oh, which reminds me, we should uh, mop up all the little excess we're going to have lying about the place. There's definitely going to be a little bit of leftover water around the edges. But never mind. How does that look? Yep, went down all the way. That's... <laughs> I love the water physics in this game. Anyway, let's uh, let's drain this out really quickly and get ourselves our rocket chimney started. We are just about good to go on this. We're going to do, drill up from the bottom here. We're going to mop up all the excess and we're going to cut up from the bottom here and replace all of this. We're going to merge this bottom half here with this top half. I think though we're going to wall this in first, make sure it's sealed in and have liquid locks going in and out. We're going to have to liquid lock this whole thing to stop the steam escaping, so we might as well liquid lock it before we finish it. We're also going to put the base of the rocket here for now, that will probably get moved around a bit, but the first rocket we're going to put in is here, and this will be a steam rocket to get us some research. But first, printables, next duplicate. Oh, three shovel legs, come on, that's just teasing. Please welcome a narcoleptic with diver's lung. We've got duplicate 99 with Tero Putkinen. Yeah, I, I have no idea how to pronounce that last name and couldn't find a way to pronounce it, but welcome, Tero. Uh, you will be our, hmm, I'm thinking, yeah, no, we'll put you into supply. We've got a lot of suppliers already, but you can never have enough. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's skip this forward a bit while we finish excavating out this uh, interesting section. Oh, actually, never mind. i got to put in a few uh, liquid locks so that people can get in and out of here in their suits. In our quest to seal things in, we may have accidentally trapped a Dreco in there. We'll, we'll, we'll try and dig them out. We're, we're not that monstrous. We, we can, we can get that Dreco out of there with very little difficulty. 
Uh, along, we're putting in these sort of double layered liquid locks here. Reason being, it's going to get really hot in here. Maybe not straight away when we start running steam, but once we switch up to hydrogen, it's going to get toasty. So we're going to have a petroleum liquid lock followed by a crude oiler. It doesn't really matter what's in the second one. It just means that there'll be a vacuum gap here and there'll be no way for the heat in here to get out. Well, a little bit. Let's just say it will definitely reduce it by an awful lot. Oh, and we should probably do some cleanup. There's a lot of vestigial stuff all over the place. Like, look at these old pipings. They're from moving liquid around the place. God knows why. Uh, there's just a lot of random junk around the place, and I should probably do some cleanup. Oh, there's a whole bunch more piping up there. Yeah, I think we'll take care of all of those while we're at it. We have almost got one layer of the liquid locked on. You can't really see it there, but we've switched off these. We've set them to sweep only. They should hopefully get no more crude oil in there, or a little bit more won't make too much of a difference, but that will just seal off that area. Then we've got a second one down here. Same thing, I've also put doors in here. We're going to make sure that they're restricted and only people with atmosphere suits can get in there when the time comes. Uh, we've got another one down here, also done up. Oh, I accidentally clicked on the door. It takes forever. There's so many duplicates it has to load up. Uh, another one down here and one final one down the bottom. I decided to throw in an extra liquid lock down here. And the rocket is slowly starting to be, be built. But more duplicates can't stop. Can't stop hiring. Uh, we've got a quick learner here with allergies, but we've got a choice between allergies, flatulence, and anemic, which are the three ones I really don't want. So we're, we're taking one of them. Uh, we don't. We do have an anemic already, but I think I think this one has animal husbandry. We kind of want it, and I sort of stripped out all the plants anyway. So say hello to Adam Zulk. Adam will be our 100th duplicate. Well, technically 101, because zombie pops, you know, zombie pops will be back, but he'll be back at 141 as <laughs> he will be reborn. Now, uh, this is actually going pretty well, if if slowly. You have to keep the game on one speed, otherwise the dupes forget what they're doing. And slowly but surely, we're completing everything all the way up. At the moment, I just have to be really careful that none of these liquid locks overflow. I think we've cut off all but the bottom two. Only the bottom two need to be filled up. Once these two are filled, we can, you know, stop the flow of crude and switch over to petroleum, and we can just about seal this up almost. While we wait for some of this uh, to fill in, we're going to have to break into this petroleum area here again. I've got a little bit of a, a lock set up, and I've made sure that only people in Atmos suits can get in, because it's rather toasty in there. We're also going to do a little bit of water boiling, I think, with that. However, there was one thing that was going on. Ah, yes, that was it. We now have a couple of shovel legs in here. You can see there we've got two shovel legs sitting there and our counter over here should already be at two. So we've got two on the counters. And where is our next shovel leg coming? There should be one on the line. Come on. Is there? Nope. Nope. Ah, there we go. So there's a the shovel leg. Let's speed this up a bit. Oh, there's two. It's just uh, as these go past the sensor, we're able to get a good idea of exactly how many eggs are going in there. So let's just have a quick check. All right, here comes our egg. Quick by the sensor. Well, oh, it's still sluggish even in speeds. There we go. Number three has gone through. And there's number four right behind it. With that simple counter, we can tell exactly how many we need. I think it's 78 eggs, but we're going to add in a few more just to be on the safe side. Probably about 90. But that just means we don't have to look and we don't have to count. The problem being, as they go in here, there'll be a mix of eggs eggs and live ones and all sorts of confusion. So that just makes our lives a little bit simpler. And while that was going on, we're starting to brick in the sides here. But at the same time, oh god, that's sugar. We have to go in here. That's got to go. Uh, I've already set up the doors. Hold on. It's gonna... <laughs> the game may chug a bit when we open those. Yep. The game does not like clicking on door permissions right now. These are copy-pasted from our little micro base, and that will mean they're the only ones allowed in here. The first thing we're going to do is deconstruct all of these liquid reservoirs. They have to go. As well as that, I think we're going to pipe in our water through here. Uh, we've already started the piping going through. You know what? Easier to show than tell. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to siphon some clean water out from over here. We're going to run it through some liquid valves to limit it to one kilo. If we limit it to one kilo, even if it boils in the pipe, it won't pop. And then with three one kilo pipes, they'll pass through here. Uh, this petroleum is well above boiling point, so hopefully it will turn all the water to, well, it'll boil it all to above 100 degrees, at which point we're going to dump it out here into a sort of steam room, and we're going to use that steam to fuel our rocket. Actually, I wonder if we could dump it in there. Hmm, that might be being too sneaky. Yeah, you can never be too sneaky. Oh, and while we're waiting for all of this to to do. It, it actually doesn't take that long. Well, uh, cycle-wise, it doesn't take that long. We are going to wall all of this in in drywall, just to make sure none of the gases can escape. We don't have to do this straight away. We could have done it later, but you know what? Uh, why not just get started now? As P3s, they will be left till the last section of building, but we're fine with that. Uh, also, we're going to fill all of these uh, secondary locks with petroleum. So these are all set up to get filled with petroleum now as well. 
and we're getting closer and closer. Now, we don't have quite enough space to stick the roof on that yet, but we're getting closer all the time to all of these projects being completed. It's just a case if you've got to keep so many, you've got to be juggling so many things at the same time just to make sure you're, you're progressing. Piping is almost complete. Old gas tanks are gone. We have got a gas pump in here that is vacuuming out this little, this little area in between the two liquid locks to make sure that there's no heat transfer. Though we're actually going to dump some steam in there, but that's just for temporarily filling the rockets. Uh, we're also got some gas pumps in here, though I haven't hooked them up to anything just yet. So that should be fairly simple. We'll just throw in some cabling like that, and we should be able to hook all of these up to something. There's there's always some random coal generators I've left lying around the place, namely because we were too late. We just set them up. Oh wow, there's another one right there, and oh yep, we can grab one from off there. These are all just temporary little settings to allow us to vacuum out the whole area. Boom, problem solved also. Most of these are all installed, but more importantly down here we have got our water or steam production just about ready to go. You'll notice that this petroleum in here is about a hundred and something degrees, and hopefully now, let's just hook this up here. Uh, we're pulling some clean water out of this section over here, we're dumping it across the pipes, it's been flow controlled to one kilo per pipe segment, well one kilo. At uh, which point it should go down here, let's hope we've got the right pipe, yep, it should go through here and by the time it comes out the other side it should be over 100 degrees, which means when it pops out in here, it will be steam. At which point in this area it will get picked up by this gas pump, this gas pump will pump it into this pipe and this pipe will pump it into this steam engine. Seems fairly straightforward. Now while that is going on, I think it's time we walled in the segment of the map. We're going to have to make sure all our duplicates can get out, all these uh, non-suited ones can get out, but all the doors have been locked in here so that only suited duplicates can get in. I think we lock this up, we have say a couple of... Oh. You know what, I'll do this on the side, because this is just going to be a lot of manual making sure that none of the dupes escape or get trapped in here. Our first bit of water is coming through. You'll notice that over here it starts at 40 degrees or so, by the time it hits the petroleum it's coming out at about 170. It seems to be cooling down a bit in the pipes, most likely it's heating up the pipes as it passes through, but that shouldn't be an issue, and immediately into steam. Steam in, then it gets pumped over into the rocket. Oh, what do we want to set the rocket to? Yeah, 719 kilos will get six research modules to the nearest planet, which reminded me I haven't actually researched the nearest planets, so we need to get access to the star map. Uh, to get access to the star, oh, excuse the pan and zoom. Uh, we need one of these. Telescope. So, yeah, emergency telescope production procedures are in effect, and oh wow. I forgot, yeah, the duplicates are going to get trapped over there. Just for a minute, they'll get dug out. What are you doing up there? Get down, get down. You just know they'll get themselves trapped one way or the other. Y you'll be out of there in no time, guys. It'll be fine. However, we have not managed to finish this or get our telescope up and running, and we've got another printable. Duplicate 101. Please say hello to Sonico. Sonico? Sonico, welcome to the team. You're going to end up in... Ooh, actually, wait, no. You are going to become Sonico. We want someone with uh, animal husbandry. So, welcome to the team. You shall be going straight into ranching. All right, that's up and running. We're going to siphon some oxygen out of our oxygen loop down here. Shouldn't take more than a minute or so. Once that's in place, we can start researching the closest planets. We don't even care which one it is. Just immediately start researching that. And why is there no power? Guys, come on. You've got everything but the power done? Yeah, it'll be done in no time. And we'll put that up to a six, though I don't think it matters. All our science people are still good to go. How are we doing on the vole front? Yep, plenty of voles. Uh, how are we doing on the voles inside of our base down here? We are up to... Where's the count? I missed it. Ah, 15. We have 15 eggs. Let's check if that's uh, borne out. According to this, there's only 14 critters. How does that happen? Oh, wait. No. There's only 14 in there. Something's playing silly buggers. Oh well, never mind. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Even if we're off by a couple, that's why we're going to go over. Uh, right, we've got that done. That door basically meant all the dupes could only exit of there, so we shouldn't have any more of our pawns going in there. Once we've got some uh, a sideway ladders in place to go around this, we'll brick it in as well. All right, we've almost got that finished. A couple of uh, nice little snips and we should be good to go. Oh, uh, you know what? Strip those off, we don't need them, that'll give us some more space for the rocket. And uh, down here I am just making a minor modification. Uh, I forgot, as always, that you should use two gas pumps to fill your steam rocket because otherwise you're only going at half a kilo per second, which 
it'll take you days at what half a kilo for 760 yeah it'll take a couple of cycles to do the whole thing so we're going to strip this out stick in a second gas pump and that should greatly speed this up another thing i forgot is this is now sealed all the way up to the top so yeah this can all go um oh i don't ladders all the way out do i that's going to be a problem the rocket is complete the rocket's chimney not quite so much if we go all the way up here it's a random mix of gases We've got the doors here. We're going to seal it in at this section because, well, we haven't finished this checkerboard pattern up here. Well, this 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 is not quite completed, but it will be eventually. Uh, we're going to seal this all in, of course, and try and capture as much steam as possible uh, end game wise. But for the time being, we're still putting in the last of the automation wires and the oh, you know, power wires are in just so we can automate the opening and closing of the doors. Got the space scanner right here. This is going to be set to detect the rocket. This is going to be a very short lived rocket, so yeah um then we've also got one more thing coming up and that is more printables because they don't stop coming i i think this is a very easy call here uh namely because animal husbandry plus seven animal husbandry that's pretty rare and very useful so say hello to jason fenwick duplicate duplicate patreon 102 damn we're getting up there we're getting up there in numbers now uh next thing up oh next thing yeah will be a rocket launch we need to pick someone though to go into the rocket so I am thinking, well, we need to pick someone from out of here. If I had been thinking far ahead enough in advance, I probably would have skill scrubbed someone. But Pika Mula, eh, you have all the necessary skills and your morale will not go over requirements. So a quick promotion for you straight into rockets. Uh, where are you? Yeah, rocket navigation all the way out to the end. Perfect. You will be our rocket pilot going forward. Now, nah, where are we? Yeah, you can might as well hop in there. The problem with running so many rockets, or if we run lots of rockets, is people won't show up anymore. Once they're in a rocket, they disappear from up here, so our population is about to drop to 101, which, well, I don't know, it just, just doesn't feel right. But we are going to have to run a lot of rockets, but I suppose we're going to be well over 100 for a while now. Let's uh, finish this doorways and the automation, and we should be able to launch our rocket in pretty shortly, actually. Well, this would be perfect time to launch, but middle of a meteor shower. I think we can wait a few minutes. I'll double check some settings un until we're ready. Uh, oh, and we need to put in a, a switch so we can open and close the doors as needs be. All right, we are ready to launch. Just a couple of quick things to cover. These mechanized airlocks here are not designed for stopping meteors, but they're designed for sealing in this area and trapping any steam that's in here from the rocket. And this rocket's not going to be very hot, but uh, that will be demonstrated quite aptly when it goes off. We've got uh, this over here to detect the rocket. It sends an automation signal to mm, open these doors when the rocket's returning and to open the bunker doors when the rocket is returning. This whole little section is powered by a, like just a little array of coal generators we threw together over there. And there's a signal switch there that allows us to open the doors manually, which is what we've done right now. Uh, there's one last thing we're doing, and it's called, well, I don't know, it's rocket shaving? Um, there is a, a built-in mechanic in the game. It's to do with rockets. Uh, when You used to be able to launch rockets and just tear straight through stuff. So if there was bricks ahead of you or even natural tiles, you could just plow your rockets straight through them and destroy them. But the game devs got smart and realized, okay, the rocket is seven tiles wide, so we'll just make sure that everything seven tiles above the rocket can't be fired through. So if there is anything occupying that space above the rocket, well, that's not a ladder, you know, like a brick or anything like that, it will give a launch path is blocked and the rocket won't be able to launch. However, uh, that's because the width of the base of the rocket is seven tiles. So this is seven tiles wide, which is why they wanted that seven tile wide gap at the top. But I think, I don't know if they misplaced this or forgot about it, but five the width of the rocket in here is only five tiles. So cargo modules, research modules, all of them are only five tiles wide. So there is a one tile gap here. This is supposed to be free of bricks, but below it, it doesn't check. So if you'll notice, we have one tile of neutronium there and a couple of tiles of neutronium there, which are in the way of this rocket engine. However... The rocket doesn't seem to care. Okay. Uh, show star map. You are assigned to that. Let's launch you. And then when we hit the play button here, very slowly, I want to see what happens to this neutronium right there. Go for it. Uh, rocket goes off and that neutronium should get destroyed or broken down into neutronium bits. I don't know. I've never actually done this before. Yep. We now have... We have now mined out 10 tons of neutronium. I don't think there's anything we can do with it, but... Uh, we've got it, and we've managed to widen our rocket chimney by one tile, which makes our life an awful lot simpler. Not nearly cinematic enough. And this is our first rocket through our rocket chimney. 
Now, any steam that this produces should hopefully uh, solidify, liquefy pretty quickly, turn from gas back into liquid because there's plenty of uh, mass in here to absorb all the heat. And once it's out of here, we can close the doors behind it. You. There we go. So once it clears the rocket silo, God, it takes forever though. Once it's out of there, the doors will close behind it. And we should end up with a lot of steam just, well, liquefying and dropping right back down to the bottom of the silo. Oh, no, no, don't fall on the petroleum. I don't want you messing up my liquid locks. Oh, God damn it. I just noticed something. Flavored jeans. Seriously? Okay, fine. We will get you a ladder segment out there. My bad. Oh, you're actually going to build yourself out of there. That's a good sign. Yeah, perfect. We'll uh, we'll demolish the ladder segment behind you and hopefully no one else will do something too so dumb. Yeah, that should be okay. Uh, down the bottom is... Now, before I started this, I should point... Uh, I should have mentioned there was about 300, uh, 300 kilos of water down the bottom of the silo already. I, I can't even remember where it came from. But now we should have even more water down the bottom of the silo. But an extra 140 kilos with more coming down all the time. The heat in here is only going to keep going up though, so we will need either a cooling solution or steam turbines or something to drain the heat out. But for now, this gets us science. While we're waiting for this rocket to come back, we're going to do, well, more rocket shaving. You'll see these little airflow tiles here. That tells me where these sections can also go next. So we got one, two, we got a third one there, a fourth one, a fifth section there. I think there's a sixth and then finally a seventh up near the top. So if we can scrape all of those off with more rockets, we can provide ourselves a little bit of a wider rocket trimming, mean, give ourselves a little bit more space to work with. In fact, we might be able to keep trimming it a little bit more. I, I just want to see how far you can take it. While this is uh, going on and we're building ourselves our second steam rocket, this one is not going to be as uh, productive. It's just a case of, I'm trying to remove that tile. The next one will probably go way down here somewhere to remove that tile. But we do need more duplicates to man the rockets. So we have skill scrubbed mascot. Mascot here was probably one of the better ones for turning into a, a rocketeer, namely because the morale requirements for them are so much lower because they have both research and improved carrying as a, a stat. It'd be better if they had suits, but eh, we, there wasn't one of those available. They'll become our next rocket navigation and they'll end up on our next rocket when it's completed. Our rocket is just about complete. The giant, giant gas pipe to actually fuel it is also almost complete. We had to run, that's a ceramic insulated pipe all the way from the bottom of the map to the top. Is this a good use of time and resources? I'm not so sure, but you know what? I want to try and scrape out this silo and make it as wide as we possibly can. But they don't stop coming, so let's get another duplicate under our belt. Well, I do have a mild dislike of Yokel because it makes leveling up a little bit more difficult later on, so let's go with a, a buff small bladder, Paul Burr. Burr? 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 Oh, damn it, I cannot pronounce that. Apologies. Say hello to duplicate 103, I want to say? Yeah, there's one in a rocket, so... 103, you'll be uh, helping us out with the gophering for a while. Now, let's uh, let's get this rocket finished, fueled up, and out of here. How is our current rocket? Other rocket is three quarters of the way done. In fact, it will return before this one launches, considering how long it takes to fuel these suckers up, was it? Yeah, it's going to take 719 seconds, even once those pipes complete. Oh, I just noticed a bunch of regolith falling by, so that means more water is returning home. Oh, damn it. Every time you go out of uh, screenshot mode, it kind of kicks you all the way to the edge. All right, once the rocket is returned, oh, our duplicates are busy doing all of that building, but we're also busy refueling this. Once this is fueled, we can send it off, so we're not going to refuel this incoming steam rocket whenever it shows up. All right, here we go. Oh, before we get started, we should probably check one thing, and that's the very bottom of the map here. Let's, ooh, nope, that's the wrong zoom. We're going to see how much water we got here. We got about 540 kilos. Yeah, 540 kilos is fine. So, we will zoom out and we will see how much water we end up with at the end of this. That is, it takes forever for it to land. It's also going to destroy that, but that's fine. We'll turn off the auto repair on that in a minute. Now, as it goes through here, it should definitely generate a load of water. And you can even see it dripping down there as it runs into the colder material. We just got to stick in some steam turbines to help with this later on. Yeah, perfect. We'll come back in about a couple of minutes and just see how much water we've managed to get on top of what was already there. After waiting around for a bit, we have got 686 kilos down here. We started with 540, so that's 140 kilos of extra water per tile. It's 10 tiles wide, which means we got about 1.4 tons of water. Considering we only put 716 kilos into it, 
Yeah, just on landing alone, we generated twice as much water as we used to launch the rocket. That, that is beautiful. Oh, uh, do we have another? No, we do not have another duplicate just yet. For I'm getting paranoid about those things. At the same time, oh, yeah, that was it. That's why I paused it. We have our second rocket shaving going, ready to go. This one here is fully fueled. It is going to rip out those tiles there, and we're just going to do a little bit of research with it. We, we don't need, we need a couple of steam rockets, but we're going to launch several of them just to shave out the chimney a bit. Doors are open, rocket is ready to launch, and uh, the only thing it should shave off is this thing right here. As in, this tile is the one we sort of want gone. How you doing? Uh, perfect. And we'll get a little bit of water out of it, though, not nearly as much as we got from the previous rocket. This is not going nearly as deep. And there we go. A slightly wider rocket chimney to work with. Okay. You can disappear and be gone. All right, I think I'm going to have to cut that out here for today. At the moment, we are busy researching. Where is it? We are researching hydrocarbon combustion. We want to get straight into petroleum so we can research further and then immediately into hydrogen. At the same time, we are going to have to retrofit this entire chimney at some point. We are going to be strapping steam turbines onto the side of it, probably about two turbines wide. That's just the only way to get rid of the heat as quickly as possible. As fast enough. It just won't be possible otherwise. Now, there has been some questions about why we would run hydrogen as opposed to steam, because steam, you know, gives a decent amount of water. It's just steam and hydrogen both give the exact same amount of water. It's just, if we were to run a hydrogen rocket all the way to the closest planets, say this one here, it costs 141 kilos of oxygen. Now, well, yeah, 141 kilos of oxygen and 141 kilos of hydrogen. Now, normally you're going to be strapped for hydrogen because you've got to split water to get it. However, we're going to be running 141 dupes. So we're going to be generating enough hydrogen just from the water we're splitting for our duplicates to run about 11 rockets on hydrogen to these uh, asteroids, which is going to generate us an awful lot of water. Uh, at the same time, to make that oxygen, the 141 kilos, it only takes about 159 kilos of water. You split it up and you get, you know, 141 kilos of oxygen. So we can run an awful lot of rockets for 140, 59 kilos of water. If we were to run steam, even with no cargo modules or anything, it's still going to cost us 400, 643 kilos of water. So it takes us an awful lot more water running steam. So, yeah, otherwise we have nothing to do with that hydrogen anyway. We're just using it to generate power at the moment. And this will generate us an awful lot of power if we strap enough steam turbines to the side of it. Also, it looks really cool, and coolness sort of has a winning factor to it. Um... Yeah, maybe, maybe not when we've got this many duplicates. We'll be demolishing this rocket as well. We'll be uh, putting another rocket there to demolish that, another rocket there to demolish that. We're going to widen out this chimney a bit. I kind of want to see how wide we could get it. Theoretically, we could actually widen this chimney out all the way to there, as in another three tiles wide, and just scrape the whole thing out. And then we could make this even two tiles wide later if we wanted to improve the width of this chimney later on. I think the fun bit, though, is going to be, where is it? There is a vent along here? Yeah, this thing. We can actually scrape out the neutronium on this vent if we want to. And if we really wanted to, we could script the, script the opposite direction by scraping out the neutronium on this vent. This is the only thing confining the width of our chimney at the moment. But, yep, that's all for another day. For the time being, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Mm -hmm.